Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I am going to be talking about my overall impressions of Canada Reads this year. And I'm going to share my top 10 shortlisted Canada Reads books um, that I've read. So as you already know, I love highlighting Canadian literature and Canadian authors on my channel. And one of the things that I absolutely love to follow is the Canada Reads competition. Canada Reads is basically a book debate that takes five books championed by Canadian celebrities. And then over four days, one book is voted out until we come down to the one book that all of Canada should read. It's always very exciting. I always learn about new books. I always meet new defenders. So I've been following this competition for a while, but more in depth in the last three years and talking about it on my channel and with friends who also have channels and podcasts and uh, love Canada Reads. So I will leave links below to all things Canada Reads related and to everything that I mentioned so you can definitely go and check all of it out. Um, I'm not going to go over you know what happened every day or anything like that. If that is something that you're interested in finding out about then I would say either check out the live streams um, that I will link below and I would also suggest um, checking out JL Richardson's Instagram JL does like a great live recap every day after the show um, and a heads up that I may talk about spoilers so be aware of that um, but basically I'm just going to give my overall impressions on a few things so I would like to talk about um, kind of the overall vibe uh, the theme and the debaters and their approach um, so the first impressions of my overall vibe um, is that this year it was kind of a little awkward um, and it did get better throughout the week but it was just kind of always there uh, the first day everyone seemed so nervous which although understandable especially on the first day there was just this added awkwardness that I don't recall experiencing before with Canada Reads um, there also seemed to be a lot more confusion than usual. Um, sometimes there seemed to be confusion about which books they should be talking about, you know, if they should be defending their own book or talking about the other books. Um, there also seemed to be uh, some confusion. Maybe it wasn't confusion, maybe it was more of a presumption. Uh, to not talk about spoilers and of course you're able to talk about spoilers um, actually in my opinion you need to bring everything you've got to the table and using specific examples from your books or in refuting the other books to make your case I think is essential and I think there's just this understanding that everyone around the table uh, is or should be <laughs> familiar with your book so spoilers in my opinion are a given um, what I did love about this year and last year's debates as well is that they kept it about the books. They did not attack each other. They did not attack, you know, each other's characters. So even when there was some opportunity to do so, <laughs> which I will talk about a bit later, um, I appreciated that the books were the main focus and it was a respectable debate that way. The other thing that I felt kept coming up was the tension between choosing a book that all of Canada should read or choosing a book that best fits the theme, which this year was one book to shift your perspective. So I'm going to talk a bit about the theme. The main theme or umbrella theme, I guess, of Canada Reads is always to find the one book that all of Canada should read. This is the focus every year and I think it's sufficient but then there is a specific theme given to kind of narrow it down a bit so for example in 2020 the theme was one book to bring Canada into focus 2021 was one book to transport us and last year it was one book to connect us so I think or I hope that all the defenders are choosing a book they think all of Canada should read. 
this is great. This is, I think, what they should do. But the theme always comes up in the debates. And sometimes, unfortunately, a book is voted off because it doesn't fit the current annual theme. So Keegan brought the theme up so many times this year and would say something like, well, if it's one book everyone should read, it's this particular book. But for the theme, I have to pick this other book. And she even used the word mandate uh, when it comes to the theme. Uh, like they are mandated to to follow the theme. Now, this tension never bothered me nearly as much in the past. And I know that there are people who have often struggled with the themes. Uh, J.L. Richardson, for example, has talked about this, I think, every year. Uh, she talks about it a lot and has talked about how it is used for marketing. Um, all of that is fine. Here's what irks me <laughs> the most about the theme. And it was brought up, um, I think, I think it was by Keegan as well, when she said that she chose Greenwood before she knew the theme. And I thought, wait a second, you are choosing to debate something and you don't even know the theme that your book is going to have to have in order to make a good debate. So I thought I must have misunderstood. That can't be right. So many of you know that last year after the debates, I had the opportunity to meet one of the defenders, um, Mark Tewksbury, who I thought did an incredibly amazing job in the debates. And Mark and his partner, Rob, gave me a tour of the Calgary Public Library after Canada Reads. Um, I will leave a link to that below so you can check that out. But this year, Rob and I would touch base after each day. And I asked if that was true. You know, did the defenders know the theme before choosing a book? And Rob said they didn't, and then confirmed this with Mark. So now I am not a big fan of the themes either, because I think it puts some books at a real disadvantage. You know, if your book happens to fit, great. But if it doesn't, if the defenders don't know the theme before choosing their books, then I think it's, you know, it's just not cool. If they do know it's fair game. But I no longer think that a book should be voted off based solely on the fact that it doesn't fit the theme. Um, they should vote based on the theme of the one book all of Canada should read. I really think that that, unless, like I said, they, they change and they tell them ahead of time. So please tell me your thoughts in the comments below on that. You know, what do you think of the themes? Do you like the themes? And does it matter to you um, if the defenders know the theme ahead of time before choosing books or not? Okay, so let's talk about the defenders and their approach to the debates. I'm going to go in order of how the books were voted off. Um, so Tasneem Gidi uh, championed Mexican Gothic, and as I predicted, it was the first to go. Um, Tasneem is a book talk creator, and I think, I think I said this in my predictions, uh, that this was the easy target. I think it was an easy target with um, regard to the book itself, but I also think that she was the weakest debater the first day. So when I did a wrap up um, with my friends at Canada Reads American Style, I will link them below, um, and, uh, and they have other ones coming out later on, so be sure to keep ch checking back with them. Um, we talked a bit about this anyway so she used to uh she's used to talking about books but not arguing a book against another book and i also think that this might be where her concern for spoilers comes from uh because as creators we try really hard not to give spoilers uh you know unless we say for sure that we're doing that but canada reads is an entirely different thing as the days progressed I think she had really good points to make and argued for other books very well. Um, she was also all over the place with her voting. Um, and when she voted on, I think it was the second day, she kind of said under her breath, um, kind of like things changed. And I'd love to know what her thought process was. 
So the next book to be voted off was Greenwood by Michael Christie, which was defended by Keegan Connor Tracy. Uh, the first day Keegan impressed me the most. I thought she was going to be the one to watch and the one to maybe keep your eye out for. Um, then that quickly changed. Uh, Keegan said a few things that in my opinion, she um, should have been called out on. So Gurdip did very kindly put forward um, an argument the one day and he did this, you know, without attacking her and he used examples from his book. Um, so, and I don't think that Keegan should have been attacked, obviously, um, but I do think that the other debaters had every right to call her out on some comments that she made um, that were very privileged and I'm going to even go as far as to say ignorant. I'm not going to say too much more about it um, because it has been, you know, talked about on social media. Um, the author of Hotline, Dimitri Nasralla, uh, even responded to it uh, or made comment on it uh, on his Instagram. So you can check all of that out um, in other places. Uh, JL Richardson talked about this as well and talked about it way better than I ever could. Um, so if you are interested, please check those conversations out. So I did like uh, that Keegan gave kudos to Canada Reads and the just the importance of having you know this literary competition uh that we that we definitely agree on um she was also the best dressed <laughs> throughout the competition uh which i know that some people really pay attention and follow the canada reads outfits and style um a day three hotline by dimitri nasralla was voted off um i thought it was going to be station 11 and it came to a tie and Keegan was the tiebreaker um, and I would like to know her process around voting off hotline because the reasons that she gave for voting it off is the exact reason I thought it should stay and is why I think people should read the book. Um, the defender of hotline was Gurdip Pandur. He is a delight. He's all about positivity and hope and try to bring that message, you know, to this debate. Um, I do think he was the best defender for this book in particular, and he is the only defender to push back with Keegan a little bit. Um, I love how he connected to this book personally, um, and he brought that to it. Um, that was true for me with Michael Gray Eyes and Station Eleven and also with Matea Roach and Ducks. Um, I thought that all three of them really seemed to have a deep personal connection to their books and, um, and why they chose them, which I really liked. Um, I think where Gurdip could have done better and maybe, I don't know for sure, but maybe could have been in the top two is with his rebuttals. He was very kind to the other books, which was lovely, but sometimes I think that took away from him highlighting and uplifting his own book. And then today, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel was voted off. Um, the reaction I had with Michael Gray Eyes, who defended the book, was, I'm gonna say the exact opposite of the reaction that I had with Keegan. So initially I thought Keegan was the one to watch and as time went by, I lost any connection that I might have had with her. Um, Michael Gray Eyes, who I was aware of before the show, I, I knew who he was. Um, he had me concerned the first day. He speaks so slowly and I often thought he would run out of time and wouldn't be able to make all of the arguments that he you know, was going to make. Um, but by the end, I came to really appreciate his approach. He was thoughtful. He was gracious. He definitely knew all of the books very well. And you could tell that he is a storyteller and appreciated the stories. He appreciated the characters and how the stories were told. 
um, I totally developed a crush on Michael and I know that many other Canadians have fallen in love with him as well. So that leaves Canada Reads 2023 winner Ducks by Kate Beaton. This was defended by Matea Roach, who is the only other defender that I knew who that who they were uh, ahead of time before the debates, um, because I am a huge Jeopardy fan. Um, I expected Matea to do well because they are so good at debating, and I do think that they had the strongest arguments overall and just represented their book the best. Um, if I hadn't done a selfish winner prediction and had I done the prediction on how I just thought people would vote and how I thought it would go, then Ducks would have been my pick. So this is not a surprise to me at all. Um, I think it says a lot to, uh, to have a graphic novel win. And I think that that was part of the argument and the choice for people as they were voting. Um, it could have been completely different if on day three had Keegan chose to vote off Ducks. So Matea did dodge a bullet there. Um, overall, I think they did a fantastic job and I was happy to follow along this year with the debates. It was a lot of fun. Um, please let me know if you followed along what your thoughts are on the debates, on the defenders, on the theme, just what are your thoughts on all of it. Um, as I always say with Canada Reads, you know, really all five books are the books that Canada should read. You know, the best book doesn't always win. Um, they all bring something different to the table. And the only book, you know, of the five that I gave five stars to was Greenwood by Michael Christie, uh, voted off the second day. Um, I still think all the others are worth a read. Uh, and this did get me thinking, though, that, you know, I have often rated books higher um, that didn't win. So I had a look back at the shortlisted uh, Canada Reads books. Uh, and then I looked at the ones that I have read. And Greenwood was my 11th shortlisted five star. So I rated 10 shortlisted books five stars. And I thought that I would share them with all of you. Um, I will share them, I think, in order of the year that they were shortlisted and I'm not going to go into any great detail or say too much about them because chances are I have talked about um, most if not all of these before. So starting in 2002 A Fine Balance by Bro Hinton Mystery. Uh, this was shortlisted and this is a phenomenal book that takes place in India during the emergency in the 1970s. Um, its characters remain with me today. There are scenes that stay with me, and this is just a moving book. The winner of 2002, I haven't read yet, so I can't do a comparison. Uh, in 2003, Life of Pi by Jan Martel was a book that I gave five stars to. This is an imaginative and creative story, and I also haven't read the book that won this year, so I really need to get on that. Um, one of my favorite books of all time, Fall on Your Knees by Anne Marie MacDonald. This was shortlisted in 2010, so this is one of my favorite authors, a favorite book that again, you know, made me feel something deeply. Um, I haven't read the winner of this year yet either. In 2012, I have a nonfiction, Prisoner of Turan by Marina Nemet, which I absolutely loved. I've also had the opportunity to meet Marina a few times, but she shares her story of being in Evan Prison in Turan. It's a very powerful story. Um, and sticking with tradition here, I haven't read the book uh, that won that year. I rated two books five stars that were shortlisted in 2013. The first is Away by Jane Urquhart, who is an incredible writer. And I remember loving how this story was told and how it flowed. Uh, the other is one of my all-time favorite authors and an all-time favorite book. And that is Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. Um, I wasn't watching the debates um, back then, but I imagine that I would have been gutted when this was voted off. 
Uh, that being said, I haven't read the book that won that year, um, but I do have it waiting on my shelf. So we're moving along here. In 2017, I rated The Break by Katerina Vermet five stars. And I easily enjoyed this more than the winner that year, uh, which was 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. I liked that one, just not as much. Um, in 2018, I gave five stars to The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimoline, uh, which I really enjoyed. And I gave the winner, um, which was Forgiveness by Mark Sakamoto, I think four stars. And I did really enjoy both. And I can understand why Forgiveness uh, would maybe take the win on this one. Now we go to 2020 when I gave From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle five stars. Um, this is a memoir about Jesse's uh, life and his experience of being homeless and Métis. Um, it's an excellent memoir and it was up against another memoir, We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib. Um, this memoir tells the story of the author's experience of being a queer Muslim immigrant to Canada. And I gave both five stars. So um, I think that Samra's book was a story that has never really been told before, which is maybe the thing that set it a little bit apart from Jesse's story, which, you know, is also important. But I think Samra brought a new perspective and voice that we hadn't heard. Last but not least is Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez, which was shortlisted in 2022. I gave this five stars because I loved the structure, I loved the characters, and I, I loved the message of the story. Um, the winner last year was Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. You know, I've talked about it many, many times, and I also gave that book five stars and understood why it won, uh, specifically last year. It was very timely to have a book like that on Canada Reads at the time that it did. Um, and I think that both books do exactly what they set out to do. Um, so from this, I have learned that I still have a lot of Canada Reads reading to catch up on. Um, but it is also just a reminder that all of the books are worth checking out and will give a more balanced experience of Canada and what Canada Reads is really all about. So those are my top 10 or 11, if I include Greenwood, um, shortlisted Canada Reads books. Please let me know if you have any favorite Canada Reads books, uh, either from this year or any year, um, that haven't been winners. Which ones do you want to highlight? Uh, were there any books you were hoping to win but didn't? And um, be sure to let me know your overall impressions and thoughts about this year's Canada Reads. Um, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.